In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Atari 5200 games up and running on the Wii U version of Retroarch. You know, I really don't have a whole lot to say about the Atari 5200. I think it is a very neat system. It's unfortunate that it died so quickly and was so unsupported. There isn't a whole lot of games for it. But you know, there are some gems buried among it, and the arcade ports, I think, are pretty great for the time period. That being said, using real Atari 5200 in this day and age is kind of a slog to me, so I wholeheartedly prefer to emulate it, and thanks to programs like RetroArch, we can emulate it on a wide variety of devices, including the Nintendo Wii U, and I'm going to show you how to get that set up today. So let's dive in. So to get started with Atari 5200 emulation, we need Atari 5200 games, and you can get these using a hardware dumper, or if you'd like, you can resort to the shady parts of the net. Don't ask me for download links. I don't have any. I'm not going to share any. I don't condone piracy, so just don't, 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 don't. But once you have your games sourced, we need to add them to our Wii U SD card. So on my Wii U SD card, I have a folder named RetroArch ROMs where I'm putting all of the games I use during this tutorial series. So I'm just going to open up this folder and add my Atari 5200 games to it. And once those have finished copying, I'm just going to back out to the uh, root of my SD card here real quick. Because there is one more file that we need to get Atari 5200 games up and running, and that is an Atari 5200 BIOS file. So if you have some soldering know-how, you can dump this using your own Atari 5200. Otherwise, you can resort again to the shady parts of the net. Again, I don't have download links, please don't ask. But once you have this sourced, we need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So for the Wii U, we find that in the RetroArch folder. And into the Chorus folder. And then the System folder right here. And we just drop it right in, and it needs to be named 5200.rom. But once you have these files placed, you can close out of your SD card, take it out of your computer, and put it back into your Wii U and get it booted up. Now, just as a quick reminder to everyone watching, this video is a continuation of my original RetroArch Wii U install video, so please refer back to that video for initial install and settings used throughout this video. I also go over how to install a RetroArch forwarder channel if you're interested in doing that. But now that we got that out of the way, go ahead and boot into RetroArch using either the Homebrew Launcher or a RetroArch Channel Forwarder. Now to get started playing our Atari 5200 games, there's a bit of setup required. So what we're going to do is go down to Load Core, go down to Atari, and choose Atari 5200, Atari 800 Core, and press A to load it up. Now what we want to do is go into Load Content. Go into our SD card, find our Atari 5200 game folder, and select a game, and get it to boot up. Now the first time you try to load up Atari 5200 games, they aren't going to work. It's going to show a blank screen saying that you need the actual boot programs for an Atari 800 computer. Just as you see right here. So what we're going to do right now is press the home button on our Wii U gamepad to bring up the RetroArch quick menu. And we're going to scroll down to options. And from here we're going to choose Atari system and we're going to go down to 5200 and press A. And it should load up your Atari 5200 games as expected. And once you have that option set you can begin playing every Atari 5200 game that you have. But rather than go through that long-winded load core, load content option, what I like to do is actually make a game's playlist. So I'm just going to close out of Centipede real quick. And now back on the RetroArch main menu, I'm going to go down to Import Content, Manual Scan, Content Directory. I'm going to go into my SD card and find my Atari 5200 game folder and tell it to scan this directory. System name, Atari 5200. And default core, Atari... 800. There we go. Now make sure scan recursively is set to on if you have your games separated by subfolders. And I believe Atari 5200 games work zipped, so if you have them zipped, make sure you have Scan Inside Archives on. But once the options are set the way you need, go ahead and start scan. And there we go. Now that the scan is complete, we have a new Atari 5200 playlist entry down here on the left. And now that we've set our system to Atari 5200, we can select any of our Atari 5200 games, press A on them, and they should load up as expected. And 
And there we go, Atari 5200 games up and running on a Nintendo Wii U using RetroArch. Now for just a quick note on controls, when you first begin loading up Atari 5200 games, you may notice that your input is not working, and this is perfectly normal. There is one more setup step required, and that is to go into our RetroArch quick menu, pressing the home button on your Wii U gamepad, and from here, scroll down to controls, press A, and go down to port one controls, press A again, and we're gonna change the device type from RetroPad to Atari Joystick because if we have it set to RetroPad, it doesn't register the inputs as we are seeing here. But when you set it to Atari Joystick, and then back out, and we can resume the content, all of a sudden, we can play our Atari 5200 games. Yay! Man, this version of Pac-Man is so different than the 2600. I know the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man is like the worst version known to man, but I just have so much nostalgia and love for it. But that's going to do it as far as Atari 5200 emulation is concerned. There is a bit more in-depth setup needed for this one, especially for steps like the BIOS. You need to make sure you place the BIOS first before running any Atari 5200 games. If you try to run a 5200 game before placing the BIOS file, you will need to go into your RetroArch folder and delete the config file for Atari 5200, Atari 800 Core. That way you can start over from scratch and get everything up and running as it's intended. But after you get it placed, you get the system set up, the system type set up, make sure you get those controls set, and you're off to the races playing your Atari 5200 games. But with initial setup out of the way, let's go ahead and cover some of the more advanced core options available within the Atari 800 core. So going back into our RetroArch Quick menu, go back into the Options menu. And our first option was again the Atari system that we had to set earlier to get these games to run in the first place. So again, make sure you set this to 5200. Next we have our video standard, you can choose between PAL or NTSC. The internal basic option is for Atari 8-bit computer systems, so we can ignore that. Same with SIO acceleration and boot from cassette. Our next option is high-res artifacting, and this one's actually pretty cool. It, it introduces some imperfections that were present on the actual Atari 5200, so I like to enable this just to give it a more authentic feel. Next is Auto Detect Atari 5200 Cart Type. I typically turn it on. I don't think you really need to, but I do anyway, just to be safe. The next option is a joystick hack for the 5200 version of Robotron. If you play Robotron, turn this on. If you don't, you can leave it off. And then our next option is Internal Resolution. Do not mess with this for Atari 5200 games. If you change it, it will just result in garbage graphics. Even after a restart, just don't. Don't mess with the internal resolution, it doesn't work. And then final option is a RetroArch keyboard type. We don't need this for Atari 5200, so just ignore it. But that's going to do it for the core options, so not much you need to mess with in here, but you do have one accuracy type of option you could change here. So set these as you need, and when you're finished, you could go down and save the core overrides. That way, every time you try to load up an Atari 5200 game, these are the settings that will greet you. Now, normally in this part of the video, I like to talk about shaders, but Wii U shaders are very weird, so I'm going to make a dedicated Wii U shader video after we finish this series of core videos, so stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it for Atari 5200 emulation. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below. This one could be a bit tricky, so don't hesitate to ask. But now, if you could all do me a huge favor, and be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. Really goes a long way to helping out the channel, and I am just so grateful to all of you for that. If you're feeling particularly generous and want to help support the channel more, you can always check out that join button here on YouTube, or click the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place up and running, so thank you so incredibly much to all of my champions who have already done so. You all freaking rock. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.